But I want to make it very clear that hate will not prevail in this county. A high school northeast of Atlanta, the latest scene of a school shooting in America as two students and two teachers lose their lives. We'll have the latest update from police there. Also hearing firsthand from Madison families about busing concerns in the district and if they think the issues from a year ago have been resolved. And News Street now catches up with Governor Tony Evers as he makes a stop at a Madison Elementary School on this first full day of school in the district. You're watching News Street now at 5. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Georgia this afternoon. Two students and two teachers are dead and nine have been taken to the hospital with injuries after a school shooting. It happened at a high school in Winder, Georgia, that's northeast of Atlanta, at around 930 this morning. The school and surrounding buildings were immediately placed on lockdown and students were taken to the nearby football stadium. An emotional Barrow County Sheriff Judd Smith addressed the media. I never imagined that I would be speaking to the media in my career over something that happened today, the pure evil that happened today. Love will prevail over what happened today. I assure you of that. Law enforcement on the ground says that the suspect in the shooting was taken into custody alive and has been identified as a 14-year-old student of the district. Our Kyle Pazorski is tracking some of the details on this story about the shooter and the developing situation. He joins us now from the newsroom. Well, we have also learned today the high school had received a phone threat prior to today's events. The phone call this morning warned there would be shootings at five schools and that App Appalachia High School would be the first. Video you're seeing shows authorities racing to secure the school and students being taken to the nearby football stadium. Local TV stations spoke to parents about what they were hearing as this all unfolded. A very scary situation for them. It's unreal and it's unbelievable and I'm so sorry to the you know families that this affected. It was really scary especially they didn't have their phones and so you couldn't contact them you know so n not knowing is really bad. Now staying on that earlier call it is not known who placed it. Officials tell CNN they are investigating the call and where it originated from. All right Kyle thank you now this all happened as we mentioned Appalachia High School in Winder Georgia about 50 miles away from Atlanta the town of Winder is in the northern part of the state, a population of just over 18,000 people. And as we head back to school this week throughout the country, Appalachian classes, well, they had been in session for roughly the last month. There are about 1,900 students in all in the district, and this is the 29th mass shooting in the United States this year so far. Those shootings have claimed the lives of 127 people. The White House calling for Congress to act on gun safety measures. Former President Donald Trump released a statement saying, our hearts are with the victims and loved ones of those affected by the tragic event in Winder, Georgia. New information is coming out by the minute. Stay up to date and follow along right here or on our news app. Just search Channel 3000 wherever you get your apps. Well, the UW-Madison Police Department investigating parts of Library Mall after reports of vandalism early this morning. Police say it happened about 3 this morning. Hagenau Fountain and other parts of the library were graffitied. The paint has since been removed, but officers are looking into whether this is related to the August 27th incident where areas around Witty Hall were vandalized. Well, let's get a look at the first worn forecast. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano is on the weather patio. Yeah, temperatures today have been very nice once again. It did get a little bit warm, but right now standing in the shade, it is just about perfect. And with the dry weather we've seen the last couple of weeks, it's caused that humidity to really decrease just 35% at this hour. 79 degrees is the current temperature, almost complete sunshine. And if we look across Dane County, a few areas creeping up into the lower 80s, and that's the case across southern Wisconsin, upper 70s, lower 80s. Very similar temperature forecast for tomorrow, and as we look at the forecast this evening. It's going to be gorgeous. Temperatures will drop into the middle to lower 70s by around sunset, middle 60s by 10 p.m. A little cooler overnight, but we aren't expecting temperatures to be quite as cool as the last couple of nights. They are still going to be chilly with lows in the middle 50s, but the last couple of nights they've been in the lower 50s, so a little bit warmer in that department. And temperatures will be warm again tomorrow, but that's going to be followed by very cool air. I'll talk more in detail about that coming up a bit later. Jacob, thank you. Last year, the Madison School District faced problems with bus staff shortages and bus delays. Since then, they've made some adjustments to accommodate families for the new school year, but there are still some families in need. That's right. Our Merrill Hubbard talked to parents who are asking for a transportation option for their kid to get to school. 
Because of changing bus routes, many families are left with unsafe transportation options for their kids to get to school. We met one family whose son has to walk over a mile along Milwaukee Street to get to his classes. We're worried about him starting middle school and now we have, he has to be worried himself how to get to school and it's like we don't want him to have to worry. Christine and Matthew have three boys that are enrolled in MMSD schools. Their older sons have no issues with taking the Metro bus, but their middle schooler either has to walk 20 minutes to the nearest bus stop or walk 20 seven minutes on a busy street to get to school. He would go like down that street and cross over the intersection. Yeah. Go under the bridge, keep going all the way down Milwaukee Street. And my anxiety would be super, super high. I'd probably like trail behind him. Yeah, the high traffic areas. It's very, very busy. It's 9 o'clock. Everybody's trying to get to work mm -hmm. fast. Just like Christine and Matthew, another parent on the east side dealt with a similar problem last year. Um, my child was getting dropped off on the other side of Buckeye Road and had to cross Buckeye Road in the dark. This year, the first student school bus did change the stop so Mary Lee's kid can get dropped off on a safer street. I see that stuff happening. I can see that they're putting thought into the safety of the children, which I think is a really good step. MMSD is efforting changes in transportation and says that they change bus routes every year to accommodate families. But for Stephanie and Matthew, they are still facing this problem. I'm like, well, something has to give here because I mean, I know it's only a couple days and I'm trying to get everybody the chance to like get things rolling, but it's yeah, a little stressful. Think. The Madison Metropolitan School District responded in a statement that reads in part, quote, first and foremost, our transportation efforts are focused on student safety. We strive to get every child to and from school each day as safely and efficiently as possible. Some delays are normal to start the year, but we are always working in partnership with first student to improve and exceed our students and families expectations. Now, some students and parents got a surprise visitor this morning. Governor Tony Evers stopped by Lapham Elementary School as part of his back to school statewide tour. The news for now political reporter Will Keneally caught up with the governor and joins us with more. Will? Well, it was a return to the classroom for Evers, a former teacher himself, and it was a personal stop for the governor as he welcomed children back to school. So I had six or five grandkids go through his school and uh, they, they're, all, they're all doing well. Evers is no stranger to a classroom, having been a teacher before becoming state superintendent, then governor. He says that lends an important perspective for someone who is now the state's chief executive. I think it's really important. It's worked well for me. I've always said what's best for our kids is best for our state, and uh, uh, it plays out here. He toured Lapham Elementary on the city's Near East Side to drive home the importance of supporting kids in public schools. The state of Wisconsin has some obligations here for kids and, uh, uh, we, you know, building new buildings, all that sort of thing. Many Wisconsin school districts are heading to a referendum this fall. The Madison District, for example, is asking voters for funds to help support running the schools as well as making improvements to school buildings. Some of those referendum are just uh, getting money so that they can keep the doors open. And to me, that's not a good thing. Uh, we, we, I think the state has to do more. That's something we will likely see the governor push for when he presents a draft budget to the Republican-controlled legislature next year. But he says that's all around the heart of supporting kids on what Evers calls... Great day. Best day of the year. <laughs> now to that Madison referendum, the governor does in fact live in the attendance area for MMSD. Now we asked him whether he will support that referendum vote this fall. He tells us that he will vote for the referendum. All right, Will, thank you. Teamsters Local 120, that's the union that represents bus drivers for Van Galder in Janesville. It has voted to authorize a strike. Van Galder is contracted for bus services for the Janesville School District, but also Coach USA that primarily brings travelers from southern Wisconsin down to O'Hare. Now, a spokesperson for the union says an official date for the strike hasn't been set yet. We reached out to Van Galder and they said this in part, quote, as we have in the past, we'll work collaboratively with the union in what we know they share with us, a continuation of providing the best and safest transportation to the children of the Janesville District. They added, quote, for the sake of the school children's well-being and in order to assure they don't miss a single school day, we hope the union continues to collaborate with us in finding a quick resolution to our negotiations. We look forward to them rejoining us at the bargaining table now. The union says it is bargaining on behalf of the workers for better pay and also for better working conditions. Well, just ahead on News Now at 5, meteorologist Jacob Montesano returns to look at your complete midweek first warn forecasts. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. reportedly is suing to be taken off the ballot in Wisconsin. That short...
That story after a short break. Mixed numbers on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average adds 38 today, but the Nasdaq falls at even 52. S&P 500 closes down nine. We'll be right back. Free for the people, only on News 3 Now. This shouldn't take too long, should it? I'll have a unit up and running in a jiffy. Oh, sorry, I have to go to the shop. Sorry, I don't have that part either. Sorry, I don't have that part either. But you said it would be quick. A fully stocked truck can make a huge difference. Call Cardinal. Right now, we're running our 60-60-60 sale. So when you purchase your new concrete coating, you get a $60 Visa gift card, plus either 60% off installation or 60-month no-interest financing. This is one of our best deals of the year. So visit our website or call the number for your new floor today. Democrats say everything's great, but when you're on a fixed income struggling to pay for gas, groceries, or medicine, it doesn't feel great. Biden here has created this mess. And Tammy Baldwin's been right there with them. 25 years in Washington, what's she done? Raised taxes. Added trillions in new debt. And gave stimulus checks to illegals. I'm Eric Hovde, I approve this message. I like a stimulus check. I'd like you to take out the trash. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built for tough. See your Ford dealer today and celebrate leadership with special offers on Ford F-Series. Pin Seekers in the Forest, Wisconsin's favorite golf and entertainment facility. The ideal setting for your game day get-together with a sports bar lounge and delicious food and drink specials. And as always, 60 all-weather golf suites with top tracer technology featuring 22 classic courses. The American Family Insurance putting course with 36 holes of fun and challenging mini golf, mini bowling and arcade games, and our 125 plus person event space for any type of party or event. Visit pinseekers.golf for booking information. Pin Seekers in the Forest, what are you seeking? Get an 11% rebate on everything in Menards. Protect your boats and recreational vehicles with FVP, RV, and Marine antifreeze. It has burst-proof protection down to negative 50 degrees, keeping you protected against freezing temperatures. Get a gallon for $2.49 after rebate. Attract a variety of songbirds and cardinals to your feeder with Enchanted Gardens Cardinal Mix. It's a blend of nutritious seeds that keeps birds coming back. Get a bag for $15.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. We learned that you know UW is planning to essentially bulldoze um, those historic memories. Camp Randall's Brick Walk of Fame faces backlash here from a father who says the move erases his daughter's legacy. That's tonight at six. It all comes down to the final drive. News 3 Now brings you the big play highlights and scores from Southern Wisconsin High School football action. Don't miss the final drive. Fridays on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Welcome back. WIS Politics is the first to report today that independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is suing to remove his name from Wisconsin's presidential ballot. In yesterday's filing, Kennedy's attorneys argue the state law upholds a double standard for third-party candidates. Democratic and Republican candidates had until yesterday to certify their presidential nominees. Meanwhile, independent candidates were only able to withdraw before August 6th. Well, if you're looking for a way to help reforest the state and make some money while doing it, the Wisconsin DNR has a program for you. The DNR annually buys seeds to help with its reforestation program. This year, they're looking for red and white pine cones. But before you grab the pine cones in your yard, the program is only looking for seeds of natural origin, meaning it cannot be from a private nursery or landscaping company planted. A bushel of pine cones fills an eight gallon container and buying stations are paying $125 for red pine cones and 60 for white. More information about how to participate is available on the DNR's website. About one in 50 people in the U.S. have an unruptured brain aneurysm, according to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Early detection is critical. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has the risk factors everyone should know in honor of Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month. It's a spot on an artery in the brain that's weakened or thinned, causing it to bulge and fill with blood. Brain aneurysms are more common than you may know. 
a lot of people uh, potentially could be walking around and not even know that they have uh, an aneurysm. Neurosurgeon Dr. Mark Bain with Cleveland Clinic says not all aneurysms cause symptoms. Larger, steadily growing ones may cause pain above and behind the eye, numbness, weakness, paralysis on one side of the face, a dilated pupil in the eye, or vision changes. Bain says not all aneurysms need treatment. A lot of aneurysms are actually fairly safe. People don't think they're safe, uh, but the rupture rates are very, very low. There are aneurysms that do pose a risk of rupture. Bain says those should be treated. When an aneurysm bursts, it's extremely dangerous and causes a sudden severe headache. Emergency medical attention is needed immediately. That way they can stabilize you, um, you know, make your blood, you know, make sure your blood pressure is well controlled. Uh, and then typically they'll contact a place uh, that can treat a brain aneurysm. Bain says it's also important to know the risk factors, including family history of an aneurysm, untreated treated high blood pressure, cigarette smoking, and age. He says treatments have come a long way and can go in through a leg or wrist artery without an incision. Patients wake up without any pain uh, and they're able to go home the next day. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now, if you do have some of the risk factors for a brain aneurysm, Dr. Bain recommends undergoing screening to see if you have one. And he says if you plan to get your aneurysm treated, go to a hospital that has multiple available treatment options. He says not every hospital system has those options. A look now at your first warn forecast. Meteorologist Jacob Matasano joins us once again. Jacob. Thanks, Eric. Here's a look at the three things you need to know going forward. We are going to see some thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, but that will be followed by very chilly weather as highs will only be in the 60s for the weekend. And after Thursday, we are not expecting really any rainfall for the rest of the 10 day forecast. Now let's look at the rainfall expected for tomorrow. Now for those of you off to the north and west, you folks will see the rain first as the system will kind of move in from the northwest and push southeast. We're not expecting widespread heavy rain, but we definitely could see some pockets of heavy rainfall. However, if it does rain heavily, it likely will be very brief. We also are not expecting any severe weather. Can't completely rule it out, but that's not really in the ballpark for tomorrow. And these showers and storms will likely last through the afternoon into the early evening, maybe lasting around sunset and beyond. But by the time we get to the overnight hours tomorrow night, we're only expecting very isolated showers, mainly to the east of Madison and we are expecting fairly dry conditions on Friday. Can't rule out an isolated shower, but that is about it once we get to Friday morning. Now, as I mentioned, beyond that, we're not expecting much rain for the foreseeable future. We're going to be dry over the weekend and for pretty much all of next week. But temperatures, they're going to be a little bit all over the place. Now, before I talk about the temperatures, I do want to point out that we definitely can't really afford a long break from uh, rainfall, which is what unfortunately we are going to see. The drop monitor has started to show some abnormally dry conditions across southern Wisconsin, so not technically a drought yet, but with the dry weather we're expecting, it wouldn't surprise me if we do see some moderate droughts start to form across our area. Well, as I talked about, it is going to be a very fall like weekend uh, after the rainfall as highs will only be in the 60s, especially on Saturday where highs will be in the middle to lower 60s so around 70 for Sunday, but still below average for this time of the year. However, the cool weather will not last very long as we're going to be back in the upper 70s to lower 80s on Monday, and that will continue throughout the rest of the 10 day forecast. And as I've been talking about, not much rain is expected either. Now looking at your first worn track. We are seeing quite a bit of a slowdown on the eastbound belt line uh, just uh, around 151. Beyond that, we are looking very clear at this moment. However, timing wise, because that slowdown uh, from University Avenue to the interstate eastbound, we're looking at around 30 minutes, but green on the westbound and also green from Sun Prairie to downtown. All right, Jacob, thank you. Next at five, the story of a well traveled cat found with a collar from Illinois all the way down in Florida. How this voyage unfolded when we come back. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. We wanted to be able to enjoy all four seasons, and patio enclosures helped us make that dream come true. The one and all.
worst part about boots? Putting them on and taking them off. Until now. Introducing hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins Boots. It's like they have an invisible built-in shoehorn so your foot slides into place without bending down. Try Skechers Slip-Ins Boots. Donald Trump's back, and he's out for control. I would have every right to go after them. Complete control. I will wield that power very aggressively. And he has a plan to get it. Detailed plans for exactly what our movement will do. It's called Project 2025, a 922-page blueprint to make Donald Trump the most powerful president ever, overhauling the Department of Justice, giving Trump the unchecked power to seek vengeance, eliminating the Department of Education, and defunding K-12 through schools, requiring the government to monitor women's pregnancies and severe cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Donald Trump may try to deny it, but those are Donald Trump's plans. Well, revenge does take time, I will say that. And sometimes revenge can be justified. He'll take control, we'll pay the price. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. I just this morning made a new hole in, in my belt. So that was super exciting. Why are women everywhere choosing Sonobello? The advanced solution for permanent fat removal. I saw the results immediately. It's the best I have felt since I was in my 20s. My waist is tiny. <laughs> I'm very, very happy. I'm nearly 50, y'all. And my abs haven't been this flat since before I had kids. For a limited time, take advantage advantage of Sonobello's best offer of the year. Sonobello's board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. Check it out, snatch waist. Loving, loving, loving the results. It will change your life, it did for me. Call 1-888-510-6198. Now, or go to Sonobello.com to claim special pricing. Hi, I'm Steve Bozen from Steve's Auto Sales, home of the $49.99 sale. Pop the top, it's summertime. At Steve's Auto Sales, we've got your ATV. Steve has the fast Jeeps. Need to carry a ladder? We've got work trucks. Easy finance at Steve's Auto Sales. Just bring your pay stubs and bank statements. Steve's Auto Sales, the best deals in Madison. Search for Steve's on your phone right now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. An animal sanctuary in Florida found a stray cat wandering around on the property recently just north of Tampa. They noticed it had a collar and learned the feline's original owner lived hundreds of miles away in Chicago. Julie Salamone reports. She just walked right in every night. She showed up at 9 o'clock. Rhonda Lang is a volunteer at Ladybug Farm Sanctuary in Odessa. For weeks, she noticed the same visitor roaming around a cage used to trap, neuter, and release feral cats. I had a trap set up on the porch and um, trying to get a specific cat. And in the meantime, this girl kept showing up um, and going into the trap and eating, like, for off and on for six hours every single night from 9 to 3. She noticed cat was wearing a collar. When she trapped the cat, she scanned it for a microchip. That chip connected Lang with Triple R Pets, a nonprofit organization in Chicago, Illinois. I was shocked. I'm like, well, how did she get down here in Tampa? And they said, well, let me find out. And um, that's when they started making phone calls and found out the path that she was on. Lang learned the cat named Marble first belonged to a lady living on a farm in Illinois. She gave Marble away as a kitten to a young man who often traveled for work. She was adopted to a young guy and it was it's a racehorsing area. They um, they traveled to different tracks and stuff and he took her to Minnesota and then brought her down to Florida and then went back to Chicago but left her behind with someone else to care for her. From there, it's a mystery how Marble ended up at Ladybug Farm Sanctuary in Odessa. But Lang believes the cat has likely been on its own for the past seven months. Marble will soon be reunited with her original owner, the lady on the farm in Illinois. She was very excited. She's had her since she was a kitten. She was born on her farm. And when she grew up, she was um, born to a feral mom. 
So all the kittens were adopted out, and she was very excited to have her back, and she said, I will bring her into my home, and I will keep her forever. Lang hopes this story encourages everyone to microchip their pets and make sure the address is updated. She says, sure, Marble could live as a stray, but she deserves to have a loving home. I'd rather if she, you know, got a home. She's sweet. I'd rather her go back to people that love her. Well, the cat's original owner said she really appreciates efforts to return her home. And we're right back. A final check of your first one forecast after a short break. Stay with us. This Thursday, one day only, earn a 25 cent high V fuel saver for every $50. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 you spend in store and online. Thursday only and only at high V. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Eric Hubdy insulted Wisconsin seniors. Almost nobody in a nursing home is in a point to vote. What a jerk. He attacked those who are overweight. Fine, you want to do that? Your health care is going to cost more. How insulting is that? He called farmers lazy. Look at the old physical toil. Now you're, you're jar largely driving around a, uh, a, a tractor. This guy doesn't have a clue. Eric Hubdy has insulted just about everyone. What's wrong with this guy? Everyone deserves the fastest, most reliable internet speeds, regardless of where they live. That's why Spectrum offers the fastest speeds in more neighborhoods than any other provider. So switch to Spectrum and get a powerful network that connects nearly 500 million devices. Switch to Spectrum Internet for only $49.99 a month with free modem, no data caps, and no contracts. Plus save with our two-year price guarantee when you level up to a gig. Call 1-855-735-1336 or scan to call. With Spectrum Internet, you can power all of your devices to enjoy streaming, video chatting, and gaming with the most reliable internet speeds. Get a powerful network that millions of customers rely on. I rely on Spectrum Internet. You should too. Switch to Spectrum Internet for only $49.99 a month with 99.9% .9 network reliability, no added taxes or hidden fees, and no contracts. Plus save with our two-year price guarantee. Call 1-855-735-1336. Call now. The kindness, the efficiency, the respect was amazing. From start to finish, they will take care of you. Everybody is just so kind and everybody's so cheerful. I just never worked with a company where everybody seems to get along and they're all happy to be working for Cardinal. Cardinal is the place to go for any type of work that you need done around your home. I never hesitate with family, friends, neighbors to recommend Cardinal and nobody has come back to me and said I was wrong. <laughs> I know I've messed up in the past, but I, I want to say this to the family. From now on, there will be zero dollar delivery fee. What? With Dash Pass, you pay zero dollar delivery fee on DoorDash. Is that what you were going to say? No, I... Guess how much I paid on delivery fee for this dinner and wine. Zero. A toast to zero. Zero! zero! Dash Pass. Your door to zero dollar delivery fees. DoorDash. This Thursday, one day only, earn a 25 cent high V fuel saver for every $50. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 you spend in store and online. Thursday only and only at High V. Coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News, the mass school shooting today. Authorities say four are dead and nine injured after a gunman opened fire on a high school in Georgia. What we're learning about the tragedy that has shaken this community. That and more headlines tonight on the CBS Evening News. And Jacob is back. One final check of the forecast. Yeah, pretty quiet rainfall wise. We have a chance of some showers and storms tomorrow, but we're only expecting a brief round of rain for each individual location. Could be heavy at times, but not expecting uh, torrential downpours and we're not expecting severe weather either. Now temperatures, they're going to be a little all over the place, not terribly, but we are going to see the likely the coolest weather on Saturday since May, where high temperatures on Saturday will only be in the middle 60s. They are going to warm up pretty quickly after that. We'll be back in the upper 70s by Monday, lower 80s Tuesday, and that's going to continue through the end of the 10 day forecast. Now it's pretty safe to say we aren't going to see any more 90s. Now 
can't completely rule it out, but at this point it's very unlikely, but clearly 80s are going to remain in the forecast as temperatures on average will continue to cool down. But although they'll cool down briefly, they're going to rise right back up. So we're not quite done with summer yet, even though it is the beginning of meteorological fall. Astronomical fall is not until September 22nd, and that's the fall that most people use. So uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, quite say it's fall yet. As a meteorologist, we can, but temperatures are saying otherwise. Uh, this weekend, though, we'll feel like it is. All right, we're back in 30 minutes for News for Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.